Hey, how are you doing? I'm Elton, and welcome to Modernising .NET Apps for Developers, a series showing you how to run existing .NET Framework applications in containers and use the Docker platform to modernise the application architecture. What does modernisation mean? It means breaking down a monolithic code base that's fragile to work with and complex to deploy, spinning out key features into separate components, which can be independently built, deployed, and upgraded with a simple workflow. That would normally be a full re-architecture project, but I'll show you how Docker makes it easy. This is the first of five videos where I'll take a .NET 3.5 web forms app and bring it into the modern world. I'll start by showing you how to build and run that app in a Docker container on Windows without changing any code. Through the series, I'll break existing features out of the app and add new functionality, all running in containers, and plug them together using the Docker platform. You'll learn how to adopt new patterns and practices like CI/CD, and how to evolve your application architecture without doing a full rewrite. And you'll see for yourself how easy it all is with Docker. So let's get started. Here's what you're going to see in the rest of this video, which is part one of the series. If you want to follow along, you can get the source code on GitHub. All you need is a Windows environment that supports containers. So that's Windows 10 or Windows Server 2016 and Docker for Windows, which is the free community edition from Docker. First, I'll show you how to package an existing .NET 3.5 web forms app to run in Docker using a Docker file. I'll build that into a Docker image share it on Docker Hub and run it in a container on Windows 10. If you're new to Docker and you're not sure about some of those terms, I'll walk through it all as we go along. After that, I'll show you what's going to happen with the app in the rest of the series, how I'll be addressing performance problems and adding new features using Docker and powering my CI CD pipeline with Docker to package, test and deploy it all. Then I'll show you a sneak preview of the final version of the app. It has a modern architecture and a modern tech stack, but the core business logic is still the same from the original monolith. I'll show it running in a highly available, scalable Docker environment in the cloud, and you'll see what the deployment and management processes look like. But I'll start at the beginning and jump right into a demo that shows you how to package your .NET apps in Docker. You package apps to run in Docker by building a Docker image with a Docker file. This is my first attempt at a Docker file for my app, which describes all the steps for Docker to deploy my application into a container image. If you're new to the Docker file language, it's very simple to pick up and most of the work gets done in PowerShell. So I start by specifying the base image to use for my application. The from instruction tells Docker the starting point for my app. In this case, it's a public image owned by Microsoft, which already has the .NET 3.5 runtime and ASP.NET 3.5 installed on top of Windows Server Core. So that single line gives me an up-to-date, patched version of Windows Server 2016 with all the prerequisites that my app needs. Now I switch to PowerShell for the rest of the Docker file, so my deployment scripts can use PowerShell commandlets rather than batch files. The workdir instruction creates a directory at C web app and sets it as the working directory for the image. Now in the run instruction, I set up my website using PowerShell. I remove the default website because I'm packaging a single application in this image and I don't want any extra stuff. Then I create a new website, specifying the physical path where the content will be and the port to listen on. This creates a website in IIS in the container image, which will host my ASP.NET application. The last thing I do is copy the website directory into the image. The published website folder has all my static content, as well as the application binaries and configuration files. But where is the published website coming from? It gets built in this same Docker file. I've been showing you the packaging stage, but there's an earlier stage called the builder. This uses a different image as the base, and this image contains .NET 3.5 and all the MS Build tools to compile and package web projects. In the builder stage, I switch to PowerShell again and create a working directory for the application source code. Then I copy the source code from wherever the Docker build is happening, which could be my laptop or a CI server, 
and run a build script. All the source code is here. The Docker file lives alongside the application source, and I'm just reusing my existing build script, which does a NuGet restore and builds the web project. This is all I need to package up my application to run in Docker. I'm going to run Docker image build, giving a name for my image, which is the MTA dev signup app version one, and passing the path to the Docker file. Now Docker will run all the instructions in the Docker file, building my app from source and packaging it to run in a container. This is a .NET 3.5 app using version one of Entity Framework. This could be a 10 year old code base and I haven't made any changes to the code. When this completes, I'll be able to run my old app in Docker on Windows Server 2016, which is going to make it completely portable. The ops team can run this on new servers in the data center or in a Windows VM on any cloud. My build has finished, so now I have my app inside a Docker image. But what does that mean? The image is logically one big file, which has a complete snapshot of version one of my application. It has everything the app needs to run, from the specific release of Windows Server upwards. At the moment, the image is only on my machine, but I can share it by pushing it to a registry. Docker image push uploads the image from my local machine to Docker Hub. I've set this up to be a public image, so when the upload completes, anyone can pull the image to download version one of my application. The features to build, ship, and run containers all come in Docker for Windows. Docker container run is the command to run a container from an image. Detach means it will run in the background like a Windows service. And publish means Docker publishes the network port on the container. So when the host gets traffic on port 80, Docker sends it into the container. That's it. Containers start in seconds and my app is running now. I can see that with Docker container list. I'll browse to localhost and I'll see my application. The demo app is a newsletter sign up website and this is ASP.NET web forms running in a Docker container. Docker container top with the container ID shows me all the running processes and here I can see a bunch of Windows services and the ASP.NET worker process, which is hosting my application. So this Docker file, which is just a handful of lines, compiles and packages my 10 year old ASP.NET app to run in Docker. I didn't change any code or config, and I'm even using my original build script. Anyone with Docker can grab a copy of the source, build the image and run the app in a container. You don't need .NET 3.5 or IIS or Visual Studio installed to do that, you just need Docker. That's how easy it is to get started with Docker. I used a Docker file to compile and package my .NET application from source and I built that into a Docker image. The image is a portable unit which you can share. I pushed mine to the public Docker Hub registry, but you can also host your own private registry for internal applications. Images are a static snapshot of your application and you run the app by starting a container from the image. Anyone can run my app on their laptop or a server in the data center or on a cloud VM as long as they have a Windows machine with Docker installed. The source code for the series is on GitHub and you can find it from this link. But if you try to run the app yourself right now, you'll see an error message because the application expects to connect to a database. You can run SQL Server in Docker containers too, which I'll show you in the next part of the series. In part two, I'll also take a closer look at the application Docker file, show you some optimizations, and look at how to integrate the application with Docker. In part three, I'll start breaking up the app. I'll take a synchronous save operation out of the web application and move it into a separate container. Then I'll use a message queue to plug the components together with everything running in containers. In part four, I'll take advantage of the events being published on the message queue and hook in some analytics to my solution without having to change any of the code from part three. And in part five, I'll move the home page out of the main web application into a separate container. Breaking all these pieces out means the different features are small and easy to test. They can have their own release schedule and it will be much faster and much safer to push changes into production. 
To keep you interested, here's a preview of what the final app will look like. Here's how the final application looks running in a production Docker Enterprise Edition environment with a mixture of Linux and Windows nodes. I've deployed the application as a stack, so each of the components is running in a service and the stack groups those services together. I've got multiple containers running the web application service and the message handlers, so that gives me scale and failover, but these are the exact same Docker images that I'll use when I run the app locally. This is Docker Universal Control Plane, which is the production management tool for containers. From here, I can see how hard my app is working, with the CPU and memory usage aggregated across the containers. I can drill down into one container and see the logs, and I can even connect to a console inside the container if I need to. These are all things I can do with the Docker command line on my laptop too, so the management of the app is the same in every environment. I'll browse to the app itself, and this is the experimental new homepage using Vue.js. When I click the sign up button, I go back to my original .NET Web Forms app, and I can put some data in here and fill out the form. This publishes an event to the message queue, and the message handlers pick up the event. One stores the data in SQL Server, and the other stores it in Elasticsearch. I've got analytics for business users running in a container too, and this is my dashboard which is reading the data from Elasticsearch. This version of the app, with the new homepage, Elasticsearch, and the Analytics UI, got built and deployed from my CI CD pipeline. I'm using Jenkins for automation, and the output for the job shows the Docker images being built, the end-to-end -end tests running in a container, and then the production deployment. The new architecture is scalable and self-healing, and as you'll see in the rest of the series, I've written very little new code to make all this happen. Modernizing a monolithic app is made much easier when you move it to Docker. That's the first part of the series. I've shown you how to write a Docker file to package a .NET application from source and run it in a container. I'm using an ASP.NET 3.5 web forms app but you use exactly the same approach for anything from .NET 2.0 to 4.7 and for .NET Core applications too. I've given you a quick introduction to the key Docker concepts, images, containers, and registries, and shown you how a modernized .NET application looks when you run it in a production Docker environment in the cloud. Join me in the next part of the series where I'll start digging more deeply into the technical side. I'll show you how to set up configuration and logging when you package your app to run in Docker, how to run SQL Server in Docker containers, and how to use Docker Compose to coordinate multiple containers. That's in part two of modernizing .NET apps for developers. If you want to get started modernizing your own apps with Docker, head to the Play with Docker training site, which is an online environment with Docker configured that has lots of great tutorials. And if you want us at Docker to help you modernize your application suite, head to docker.com slash MTA to learn how we partner Docker architects with infrastructure providers like Microsoft and consultancies like Accenture to bring your apps into the modern world.